I was looking at this issue of Nuts and Bolts magazine and the uh, it has an article in it I think it's this one no this one called filter design software that reminded me that I haven't really talked much about uh, design software particularly circuit simulators and things like that in a while in fact the uh, the last time I did this was back in uh, my number 164 Tom Tech Test 164 where I did a, a video on the analog discovery and spice but uh, what I would like to do here is just give a little bit of an overview of some of the software that is available and I'm going to zoom in here on this uh, this page if you have the if you have a subscription to nuts and bolts or you uh, can go get a copy at a newsstand or whatever uh, you can find all of this but there's a number of uh, things that they talk about here including the uh, well let me zoom in a little bit more in case you want to copy some of these down there's the uh, a filter design software there from uh, microchip and then TI has what they call WebBench, and we'll look at one of those here in a minute. And then Filter Wizard, which I've talked about, that's available on the analog disco or the uh, uh, not analog discovery, the uh, analog devices website. Uh, there is some other filter design software, but eventually you get down to the one that they're talking about here, which is right up, well, they, there they talk about LT Spice, but the one that they're actually looking at here is called LC. And so I downloaded LC, and over here on another screen, you'll see the LC software, and I'll line this up a little better in a minute so you can see it. Uh, but what LC does, and by the way, the, the name E-L-S-I-E -E comes from the way you pronounce the, the symbols for a, an inductor and a capacitor. That is L and C. So L-C is, uh, is where the name comes from. Uh, yeah, well, okay. That's the way it is. Uh, on the screen, you see a filter. So let me rearrange the camera just a little bit to show you how, a little of how this software works. Okay, here is a Cower filter that's spelled C-A-U-E-R, named after the, the gentleman who uh, first developed this type of filter. The, uh, it consists of a series of sections. And you may notice these numbers up here. This is section one, this is section two, then section three, section four, section five, section six. And you may notice that sometimes a section has more than one element in it, and sometimes it only has a single element, like the connection between section one and section three is a, a capacitor, and so on. And then down below are the design data including, and I'll read these to you in case they're hard to read, the band width, the center frequency, the family of, in other words, in this case, it's a Cower filter. That could be a Butterworth or a Chebyshev or any of the others. And then uh, a variety of other uh, things, including the Q of the inductors that are assumed, uh, the Q of the capacitors that are assumed, and so on, and allows you to decide, are you going to even show the Q value of resistors, which resistors do have a Q. It's usually very high. But, uh, but for example, if you're using wire-wound resistors, well, the Q is not very high. So, uh, anyway, it's a very nice little uh, piece of software. But let me show you a few of the other uh, things that are that are available.
above Elsie is Tina T.I. And uh, the the TI, the first TI stands for Texas Instruments, and I think it's Network Analyzer is what TINA stands for. Why they repeat TI again, I don't know, but anyway, they do. And we'll open up a file, some examples here. We'll open up a, a design from Filter Pro, and let's see if we can find a Cower filter in here. Well, I guess not, uh, but but we can find a second order Bessel. Okay, and there we have the schematic, and of course this is a, an active filter. And then beneath the schematic, you have uh, a little bit of uh, just comments about who designed this filter. And then below is the, uh, maybe it'd be easier if I just scroll up. Is the actual response. And the the time, uh, basically the scope trace or the simulated scope trace, the uh, uh, input to output voltage ratio, volts per volt, and I think that might be all of this one. Yeah, that's all there is in this design. So the uh, you may, if you've watched a few of my videos I did on active filters, you may have seen the reference to the uh, to this software. The Tina TI, uh, you may recall I used it on the UAF-42. Uh, I'm not sure if I showed the results, but I, I know I showed a, a plot of the, uh, of the frequency response, the simulated frequency response. Once again, this is a simulator that's free. You can download it from the TI website. Let's now look at the Filter Pro, which is another piece of TI software that you can use to design active filters. And this is very similar to some software available on the Analog Devices website. Uh, once again, I've shown some of this with the UAF-42. The uh, It allows you to do a variety of different filter types. It also allows you to specify the specifications. The uh, Let's say that we're doing a band pass uh, and the filter specs, uh, etc. And then uh, the, the filter response and things of that sort. It's, uh, it's a very useful uh, tool. It's, it's tailored for TI products, though you can enter your own models. Uh, a lot of people complain that these, uh, these, the free software available on a particular vendor's website generally only has some, some generic models and then that company's products. But there's a reason for that. The reason is that without permission from their competitor, they can't steal the, the uh, design details of their competitor's product and put it in their simulator, even though that would be very convenient for us engineers if they would do that, but legally they can't, uh, they can't do it. Okay, that's Filter Pro. Now, let's look at LT Spice, and once again, if you are interested in LT Spice, I refer you to my video on Spice uh, and the Analog Discovery. Once again, that's uh, Tom Tech Test 164. So, uh, let's open a design. I think I have a Class A 3904 that uh, I show in that uh, same video that I referred to, the 164. And this is a simple, 
one transistor class A amplifier and uh, it uses a, a, uh, a frequency response that uh, that's what this AC analysis is doing and so on. Once again this is just a 3904 with a couple of biasing resistors, a collector and an emitter resistor and an output through a 10 mic capacitor into a 10k load the, it's run off a 15 volt power supply and once again I'm not going to talk much about this. I show a lot more about how to use SPICE in that video and there are even better videos than that on YouTube that go into a lot more depth uh, than I do. So uh, this is LT SPICE. It's available from the Analog Devices website. It used to be available on the Linear Technology website but they uh, have been uh, purchased by analog devices and much of what they used to have available is still available. However, there used to be a nice filter design program on the Linear Technologies website and I noticed that is now missing. So uh, they didn't copy or they didn't keep everything up. Uh, they, uh, as often happens when one company takes over another, they, they sort of rein them in a little bit and uh, try to impose their corporate will. So that looks like that may have been what happened to uh, to that filter design program that Linear Technology had developed. So anyway, you can do a lot of things with this DC analysis, AC analysis. If you're familiar with SPICE, uh, you are probably already familiar with LT SPICE. You, uh, you've probably seen it. By the way, Tina TI is is just another version of SPICE. Uh, it's uh, got some additions that allow you to use things like the Filter Pro inside uh, Tina TI. Uh, LT SPICE I think has some of those same additions as you can use some other analog discovery or analog devices uh, tools in. But nonetheless this is free. It's available on the analog devices website. The uh, one that I'm going to show you but that is not free is, if I can find it here, oh there it is, Multisim. Uh, Multisim is a uh, simulator developed by National Instruments. But as also uh, I pointed out earlier, the uh, the, let's open up uh, this. This is the same circuit that I just showed you. Uh, it's a 3904 with uh, pretty much all the same characteristics as the one I just showed you in LT Spice. Multisim, however, is not free. Uh, it used to be. In fact, uh, I have some some old discs. I'll kind of flash them in front of the screen here. You may not be able to uh, to see them. Let's see. No, you can't see that. Well, let me turn on some light. As you see, this is uh, a uh, disc that I got from Modern Electronic Communication. Uh, I think it's a 2002 edition, uh, and you see on there Multisim Textbook Edition. Uh, they used to provide student copies of Multisim, but I haven't been able to find those lately. Uh, similarly, this is a, uh, a disc from Cedric Smith's uh, Microelectronic Circuits, but it's pretty old too. I think it's from the same area. And on there they used to include uh, P-Spice which was a pretty nice little uh, little spice simulator. Once again that does not seem to be available. I've looked for it and I don't find it anywhere. But nonetheless if you have access to Multisim and I know a lot of the students who, who watch my videos do, uh, do have access to Multisim through their, their uh, the license that their school has. And Multisim is a part of a package that uh, analog devices provides that includes uh, the analog discovery uh, 
units and, and the software waveforms and so on. So uh, it is available, but unfortunately it's not free. So if you're looking for a simulator that's free, uh, unfortunately multi-sim is probably not going to do it for you. So those are a few of the uh, simulators that I use and you see up here at the bottom there is LC, the one I talked about that's, uh, that is a, by the way, is not an active filter design, that's, that's only for passive filters. And then the Tina TI, which is the uh, uh, loadable, downloadable from the TI website. The Filter Pro and LT Spice that you can get from the Analog Devices website. And then finally at the top is Multisim, the, the uh, simulator that's a part of the National Instruments package. Uh, that you do have to pay for. So I hope that this overview gives you a little bit. If you have not, uh, let me go into YouTube here and show you what that Now let's see. Here it is. Analog Discovery and Spice. On the screen is a simulator. Let me pause that so I'm not talking over myself. Can't imagine a worse situation. Uh, so this is the, uh, the video that I'm referring to. And you'll notice here that it's let me zoom in on it a little bit. You can see it a little better. It's called Analog Discovery and Spice. So if you're interested in more, uh, more of an in-depth look at Spice, not a complete tutorial, but a lot more than I'm doing in this video, take a look at this, uh, uh, at this one and uh, you may get something out of it. It particularly talks about some of the problems that new users of, of Spice tend to have, whether it's LT Spice or Tina TI or P Spice or, or Multisim for that matter. So uh, I, I hope that you've enjoyed this. If you haven't seen Spice for a while, you might want to go back and watch this this video as a little refresher or if you don't have a lot of experience with Spice and you want a, a more introductory uh, video this one will do it but all I'm really trying to do here is to uh, cover the basics in terms of filter and circuit simulators over, over the internet all but one of them for free hope you enjoyed this and it's useful to you uh, put some comments if you like this kind of an overview. Uh, I don't usually do these sorts of overview videos. I tend to focus a little more on a particular subject. But uh, if this looks interesting to you and you might like to see some others, uh, give me some suggestions. I'm always happy to consider anyone's suggestion about a video. So. Uh, once again, as I uh, do at the end, I say I hope you enjoyed this, look forward to some more, and have a nice day.